If you watched a lot of Spongebob, you may have come across an episode titled Kenny the Cat. This episode may be ridiculous and goofy like all the other ones, but it's a gruesome secret. When the final version of it was aired on March 29, 2014, you would first see the title card, Kenny the Cat, followed by the credits, synopsis, and it goes like this. Spongebob is excited because a brand new hero, Kenny the Cat, is coming to town. Kenny the Cat, who can hold his breath underwater for an extremely long time, Mr. Krabs doesn't even care at first until he sees how famous Kenny is and becomes excited about Kenny's visit to Bikini Bottom 2. So he decides to have Kenny appear at the Krusty Krab and gave him the manager's treatment. SpongeBob then goes to Sandy's tree dome where he unsuccessfully imitates Kenny before he tells Sandy the news about Kenny is coming to town. But when Sandy thinks that Kenny could be fraud and has no land mammal can hold their breath for an extended long period of time, well SpongeBob calls her jealous. That night SpongeBob and Patrick camp outside to see Kenny and they took the, the look at the stars. Shortly afterwards, Spongebob pa paints his and Patrick's face to look like Kenny, which disturbs Patrick, as he shows Patrick the other objects along with his idol doll to idol. Patrick then gets creeped out by the amount of idol worship and quickly leaves. The next day, Kenny the cat arrives and starts giving out autographs. Spongebob asks Kenny to autograph his, his custom Kenny spatula, then he invites him to the Krusty Krab. Kenny then arrives at the Krusty Krab hub, and then Mr. Krabs gives him free ketchup packets and all-you-can-eat buffet and his honor. He often then begins to struggle as much as he needs to take a breath, but he draws a toilet and, of course, runs to the restroom. In the bathroom, Kenny takes an oxygen tank out from behind his back and uses it to breathe. SpongeBob, who wanted an autograph, sees this and realizes that Kenny was fraud after all. Kenny begs SpongeBob not to reveal his secret because he just wants to be special, and SpongeBob agrees. When everyone was admiring Kenny and the basket, skit, and glorious fame, Sandy then shows up and asks him for some questions to expose Kenny. After shortly talking about what happens to mammals that goes underwater without any air for a long time, Kenny gives from the pressure and the oxygen tank reveals himself. This causes everyone to turn against Kenny and Mr. Krabs and takes back the ketchup packets. However, Spongebob decides to help Kenny by giving him a suit and helmet, then he decides that Kenny should become famous cat who likes water. Kenny then thanks Spongebob for helping him. As Sandy arrives and launches the smiling Kenny back to his home in the surface, Sandy then mentions that you can never trust a cat, but gets confused, saying, or is it a dog, and then the episode ends. This is where my real story begins. Think about the many times actors, singers, and show hosts rejected horribly when they saw the infirmity crumble before their very eyes. Take Robin Williams, for instance. On August 11, 2014, in Williams had unfortunately took his own life in Paradise City, California, home. His body was then cremated at Montes Chapel at the hills of San Samanino, and his ashes were scattered all over Francisco Bay at, at the day of his death. The final autopsy report released that on November 20, 2014 concluded that he had died of expasia due to, well, suspected by Marion County Sheriff's Office on August 12th, Williams was also found as supernatural wounds to his hands and arms, most likely caused by a pocket knife laying nearby. Neither could alcohol or legal drugs were, were involved, but the prescription drugs present on his body were, were at his funipunic levels. The report also noted that Williams had also been suffering an increasing paranoia. An examination of his brain tissue suggested Williams to suffer from diffuse Lewy body dementia. Describing as a disease, and the terrorist inside I, my husband's brain, his wife Susan said, however you look at it, the presence of Louis bodies took his life, referring to the diagnosis of Plank Parkinson sounds. As this similar to the concept of the episode Kenny the Cat is much less gruesome and more kid friendly so the younger viewers can understand death. Like the episode of Sesame Street Goodbye Mr. Hooper, how I managed to find this original plot is not as easy task as I'll tell you that much. 
but I finally succeeded in extracting the information and download the episode onto my computer. The episode was just how I described it before, but it goes to the scene where Spongebob found Kenny in the bathroom with an oxygen tank, and things got really messed up. Spongebob's taste turned red, just like in the episode, Battle for Bikini Bottom, where Patrick hunts Spongebob by wearing a Krabby Patties on his feet, but this time there was something about this scene that got me on edge. Spongebob's eyes was really small and shrunken as his head. His lips quivered with frustration as he began to make strange choking and hacking throat noises. Kenny begins to cower, looking truly fearful. Hell, I even was fearful for Kenny. This was definitely not the same commercial anger that Spongebob displays in the other episodes, just plain morbid. Then after that, Spongebob then begins violently screaming at Kenny, more loud than the other episodes. As he was yelling so loud, I thought that the voice actor's throat could have been sore as hell. I couldn't post what much he said on here, but it's definitely vicious and furious. He went in so far as to grab Kenny by the neck with his two hands and furrowed him. But of course, Kenny fought him off and tried to reason with the yellow sponge, but Spongebob then turns and runs to the kitchen error, and things start to act like the normal episode. Spongebob getting rid of his decision to Kenny, Kenny then telling him that he wanted to be special, and Spongebob agreeing to Kenny's pleas. But like in the actual episode itself, where everyone is admiring Kenny and basking in him for glorious fa fame, Sandy then shows up and asks him some questions to expose Kenny. After she starts talking about what happens to the mammals that go under without air for a long time, Kenny gives them a form of fur from pr pressure and then takes out his oxygen tanks and reveals himself. This causes everyone to turn against Kenny and Mr. Krabs swipes back the ketchup packs as Sandy watches with evil glee. But as Mr. Krabs did, instead of the words air breathing Charlin, he said the words, you son of a bitch. Now this is where the episode begins to take a dark turn. There was a bubble translation to Kenny and Spongebob and Sandy walking down Bikini Bottom with everyone else booing and yelling at him. There was even stuff being thrown at him like at bottles, cans, garbage, and even cosmetic things like the sink and becomes some laundry. Sp Patrick was there, but he was also booing. And then he grabbed Patty Krabby Patties at Kenny while eating them as he did so, which Spongebob asked him if he was booing like that. As he thought that he was happy to see Kenny, the typical Patrick's a prick moment, then Kenny begins to slowly break down, watching the crowd grow more and more hateful with every boo and every insult and every fret. Suddenly, we see, quite literally, his mind beginning to snap. We see a broken bottle from the onslaught and takes it. At the crowd with hate, he raises the sharp end of it and smashes the bottle. Dull tears in his eyes as he did so. Spongebob seeing that Kenny was about to <gasps> gasps in horror and literally begs Kenny not to end his life. But, of course, the angry crowd sees this and became shocked and quickly died down. Look at it, the emotional scene. All except Sandy, who is, shockingly enough, watches with mouths and continuously mock and cheer Kenny, forcing him to take his own life. At this point, the music daydream drama was already playing in the background as Spongebob pleaded for Kenny to put down the bottle where he gets up and hurt. Of course, Kenny then looks at Bikini Bottomless around him, and with all of his concern and safety and a mental state, and tears up even more as he did so. Without any hesitation, he plunges into a broken bottle, jamming inside of his eye socket, and in a cartoony-like fashion, he unfortunately died in SpongeBob's arms. SpongeBob begins to feel automatic sorrow for and regret for ever lashing out at Kenny from before, and just kept it a secret. As this happens, Spongebob begins sobbing harder than the previous episodes, and Sandy just laughs an evil laugh, and that's how the episode ends. Indeed, the episode was too intense for viewers, and there was even no blur or graphic imagery like most lost episode stories on the internet. But until I saw the reason why Kenny wasn't in the other episodes, and why he wasn't coming back, this version was cut and was changed into a Spongebob gives him a suit and helmet, and Sandy was been launching Kenny to the surface. I never really believed in the unexplainable before, but now I do. It's hard to imagine things like this remained for hidden for so many years. I mean, it's kind of baffling, but when they see that they only have one thing to fear but fear itself, it's what fear spreads, and just as what I saw may have been the most messed up thing I have ever that has ever been made for children.
And speaking of children, one of their parents called Nickelodeon Animation Studios and filed a complaint of this episode being air. It wouldn't be a Maze and Lost episode to come to light. Well, it'll be worth a million views, but yet again, they don't call it Lost Episodes for nothing. And I am typing this to warn you of what you see isn't what you get. And that, my little pretties, was um, Spongebob, Kenny the... Oh, I guess you could say Kenny the Cat, the original pilot. A um, Spongebob Lost Episode um, creepypasta. Uh, written by the Dark Cat. 199 dark cat 97 uh my final thoughts on this story now i i kind of remember you know shadow narrating this a long time ago i think that's what he did i'm i don't really remember because it's been oh quite a long time since i last sat there well i kind of narrate read this story maybe about a few uh, months ago or maybe it was a few weeks ago actually i'm not really too sure but it was around the time where i decided to you know check out this episode and to be completely and utterly honest, this episode, of of its own self, to be completely honest, it did have, like, a good concept for it, but at the same time, when it, when it, you know, I guess near towards the ending, it just went completely flat. I'm just being completely honest, you know. This story, I, I kind of knew this was an old story from 20, um... From 2018, I believe, or something like that. I don't really know. But this story, to be of its own self, to be honest, this is kind of like based on the new um, episode, well, the original episode for, like, um, Spongebob. Now, the beginning part was actually pretty good about, you know, the um, protagonist explaining the episode of, you know, what's going on. But then when it gets to the alternative episode where Kenny takes his own life, life because um he's been exposed for all that it really that's when things started to go downhill and that's when i didn't really care for the story like the grammar of the story the grammar is pretty good and same with sentence structuring although i did spot a few um run on sentences so the story of its own self was a bit difficult for me to read at times because of that but I'm definitely saying this right now that this episode was quite interesting of how, you know, this is evolving Kenny the Cat and the reason why we don't see him anymore. Like, the mentioning, you know, to be honest, like, I guess when it comes to, you know, Kenny the Cat, you know, being exposed for, you know, what he did and was fraud and all that, and then he takes his own life... And, yeah, that's when things started to go downhill. Now, the, the grammar, the, the story did have an interesting concept for what it is. But, the, I do have some issues regarding the, the episode. So, one thing is the mentioning of Robin Williams and when he, you know, of his death and all that. I really feel that this one just didn't feel that it was necessary to include in it, you know. I know Robin Williams died and all all that back, you know, years ago. So, to be honest, I felt that that was not really um necessary to be in the story. Like I really feel that, you know, the fact that, you know, um Robin Williams is deaf in this one just did, it just didn't really, you know, need to be there for whatever reason. Like there was no reason for that to be in it. And another thing I would definitely have to say was that, you know, Kenny take his, taking his own life. I don't understand why why a lot of Lost Episode Pastas do tend to do this. I really don't. I just really don't know why. But for some reason, when it came to this story, I honestly just didn't know what to think of this story because of, well, of how it all went out. It just didn't work with this story I think that's just my you know thing I think that's just maybe just me but another thing too which I would have really have to you know sit there and say is that this story all of its own self was just mm, well how do I put this in the most um honest way as possible to be honest this story just it didn't really make sense at times and that's very, and that's something I'm saying. Like, it just didn't make, um, a whole lot of sense at times. Like, this story just didn't really, you know, 
tend to do make a whole lot of sense. Maybe that might be just me, but I really just don't know. I really just don't know again about, you know, when it came to this story, you know, with the um the fact that this story, you know, sat there and just um basically it just sat there and you know, it just didn't sit well with me. I think that's what the problem is with the story and the and the ending wasn't really that satisfying to be completely honest, you know, saying that um saying that the episode you know, I guess maybe just the mentioning of lost episode stories on the internet. It just wasn't really necessary to include that in there. I mean, it just wasn't that necessary to include that at all. Like, just to be completely honest, it just it just wasn't necessary to include that at all. I'm just being completely honest. Like, I'm not saying that it is the case, but I'm just saying that the story just didn't, you know really make a whole lot of sense when it when I was reading this. Like, I guess near towards, you know, the when Kenny was taking his own life, to near towards the ending was when um it started to go downhill. Like, this story was not bad, but the story could be, you know, improved. Mainly regarding, you know, what is going on in this story, such as, well, um... The fact that, you know, certain things that were mentioned in it that really weren't necessary. That's just, that's one of my only complaints on this story. But the story does, what I would suggest for the story to do is maybe needs a little bit of improvement. It needs improvement. That's one thing I would have to say. But I'm just going to sit here and say this story is not a bad story. It just... It's an okay story in my opinion, but it just needs, you know, a more, um, it just needs to be more, um, I guess, um, I guess you could say it just needs improvement. I think that's what I really need to say. I think it just needs improvement, but I guess maybe that's it. But, uh, I'm going to sit here and just say this, that this story just didn't really make a whole lot of sense. And the things that were mentioned in it just really didn't um, need need to be a whole, just didn't make a whole lot of sense. And that's the most really, that's the most thing, something thing right here that I'm just saying. Although this story is not terrible, I'm not going to lie, it's not a terrible story. I just wish there was like maybe some things taken out that really, you know don't need to be necessary in it, but yeah. Now, anyways, with that being the case, that being said, this is just simply my own personal opinion, and if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to own opinions regarding to these creepypastas, and this is simply my own personal thoughts. My final rating of this story, I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10. It's not a bad story. I did find, you know, part, most of it to be enjoyable, but when it came to, you know, when Kenny, um, took his own life, and... And even near towards the ending, it just wasn't really that satisfying. And the story just went downhill from there. But not only that, the things that were mentioned in it that weren't really, you know, necessary or needed to be included in the pasta. So that's why the story gets that, you know, 6 out of 10. It's not a bad story. It's not terrible. But it does could be a little better. Or at least better in general. Anyways, that being the case, that being said, what did you guys think about this curry pasta? Did you all enjoy it? Did you all not? Also, what we have done person to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me now with your thoughts down in the comment section down below. I'm um, the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you happen to be brand new here on, on this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell when I upload so then you guys will not miss an upload. And as always... Please roll the outro because I'm 